So I had my videos all planned out. I was going to talk about codependency and it was going to last me until September. And then about two days ago, I saw a documentary on Netflix called Athlete A. And everything changed. I want to ask you a question. A very dark question. What do you think is worse? Mental or physical slash sexual abuse? Which abuse is worse? The one that inflicts the mind or the one that inflicts the body? Now, most of us would say physical and most of us again would say sexual. And when we hear of sexual abuse in children, we're horrified. We're thinking, hell yeah, like that is the worst type of abuse. Is it? My name is Olympia. I have a degree in cognitive neuroscience and I am not here to speak on behalf of Simone Biles and Maggie Nichols and all the rest of the women that I will mention in this video. I am here as a person with a degree in cognitive neuroscience that likes to nitpick the brain, but I'm also here as an emotional and mental abuse survivor. And I wanna shed some light on something that I think we're kind of missing. We're kind of not viewing this from the right point. So unfortunately, let's start. This documentary horrified me, but it horrified me not because of the reason you will think. Quick overview, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Athlete A is about the biggest sexual abuse scandal in US uh, sports history. It is the story of Maggie Nichols, who was athlete A, and how she was the first person to file a sexual abuse report against Dr. Uh, Larry Nasser. By the way, if I haven't mentioned this, Dr. Larry Nasser was the official doctor for the United States gymnastics team. Through, these, through this documentary, Athlete A, we learned that Dr. Nasser abused, according to Athlete A, abused more than 500 um, survivors. They're not victims, they're survivors, there's a difference. And including nine uh, Olympian champions. And this is also including Simone Biles, which is why I'm mentioning her, and obviously um, Maggie Nichols. But I don't wanna, I wanna use this video today not to talk about the sexual abuse of these girls. I want to use this video to talk about how the mental, emotional, and sometimes physical abuse single-handedly led them to the arms of a sexual predator. If these girls had to choose between the lesser than of two evils, and I use choose with huge quotation mark right here because obviously they did not have a choice, I think they'd probably choose physical abuse. Why is it, it is so important to identify mental and emotional abuse? Because the stories I will share with you later on in this video all illustrate that these girls may be sexually abused, but it is the mental and emotional abuse that have left the long-lasting scars that have um, been so hard to recover from. The other thing I want to talk about is the ripple effect that this documentary has right now at this moment and trust me it will extend even further. There are girls from across the world, Belgium, Australia, UK, um, South Korea, China, all these girls are suddenly voicing um, uh, telling their stories about the emotional, mental, physical, and sometimes sexual abuse they went through. And some of these stories are go back 20 years. So why now? Why suddenly did all these girls decide to speak up? So the first thing that I want to emphasize is that these are not girls. These are not women. In the documentary, we see these 
grown-up women talking. But when this happened, they were children. And that says it all. Now, a study from Jackson and Harding has shown that maltreatment, neglect, abuse um, affects the psyche of children and it doesn't allow them to recognize them, recognize or express emotions. So if you watch this documentary, you'll see that one thing that stuck out to me was not what Dr. Nasser did, but who he was. He was described as a kind doctor, a funny doctor, a doctor that supported them and told them that their, their coaches are being asses and pigs. And most of all, a doctor that offered them candy and food when they were being starved. Now, a child cannot comprehend what it means to be sexually abused they may realize that something's off, that something's not exactly right. But what Nasser did, which was genius, and I'm not saying this in a good way, I'm saying this as in a way that it, even fur it made it even further hard, hard to understand that the kids were being sexually abused. And what he would do is that he would position himself between the child and the parent. And basically, with one hand, he would fix their ankle, their knee, their pelvis, their back. And the, the, the parent couldn't see what they were doing, what he was doing with the other hand, sexually abusing them. So the child is sitting there and is thinking, so even though this may feel wrong, my parents are not saying anything, so it shouldn't be wrong. He manipulated the situation to make it seem that what was going on was normal. And this is, I believe, one of the reasons why it took so long, despite reports being done, despite the girls afterwards understanding that something wasn't right, to be able to understand that these, this guy was sexually abusing them. Wow, my heart's racing. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, this video is going to be like a little all over the place. So after Maggie Nichols makes her first statement and they ignore it, what I want to emphasize is that these girls describe being starved, being pushed to their limits, being uh, having to work on injuries, uh, fat shamed, weight shamed, um, telling them that they're being lazy or mentally weak. And I will share the stories um, later on in this video. So my channel is all about perspective. And I want you to enter a very dark place right now in your mind. And I want you guys to think as children. If you were a child and you were being injured, slapped, beaten, uh, starved, would you go back to the mental and emotional and sometimes physical abuse that these coaches and this organization was inflicting upon you? Or would you turn to the doctor, the kind doctor that gave you food when you were hungry, that told their co your coaches were assholes when they were being, and pigs when they were being, when they were verbally assaulting you? This is why it is so important to understand mental and emotional abuse. We think that mental and emotional abuse is up to the victim. They can get up and leave. And we think as physical abuse and sexual abuse and are horrified, but we think that this is not up to the victim, not up to the survivor. They're being forced. And in a sense, yes, they are being forced. But this documentary showed how the mental and abuse and the mental and emotionally abusive um, surrounding of these girls led them to the sexual predator. Of course, this guy took advantage of this power, took advantage of this stance that he portrayed to these children. But why, why this documentary is having such a profound effect right now? As an emotional and mental abuse survivor, 
when you go when you when something so horrific happens to you and this goes to all types of abuse unfortunately sometimes the people around you the people that are close to you, the people that love you cannot go down that path cannot go down that cannot relate to those dark thoughts find empathy and it's not their fault it's just that something that the human mind can't understand the other person's mind can't comprehend so when when athlete a came out and when everyone and when testimonies and stories started to be to being shared all these survivors suddenly found common ground girls out there that felt completely alone thought damn this girl from across the ocean a girl from australia saw a girl in america and was like she felt that she felt that dark feeling that i thought i was the only one that i felt it and this is what humans crave why do we enter into relationships why do we want family why do we want friends why do we not seek to be alone for the rest of our lives we want to feel like we belong we want to feel like we can relate to something to someone to a feeling there's a video about simone Biles with simone biles it's an interview and she's talking about the um the 2021 olympics how they're training and she said the following at one point, I slept so much because for me, it was the closest thing to death without harming myself. It was an escape from all of my thoughts, from the world, from what I was dealing with. It was a really dark time. I will link this video below. And then the interviewer asked her, why did you share this? This is such a dark thing to say that you slept for hours because it was the closest thing that you could do to death that wouldn't involve you harming yourself why would you put out such a dark thought and her response was that because i wanted other people to know that i fe felt the way they have felt that's the core thing guys that's the common denominator guys it is not the physical abuse. It is not what type of abuse is, how severe the abuse is. It's the feelings. Simone Biles did not say, I wanna share my story. I don't wanna tell you guys what I went through. She wanted to convey to the world that no matter who you are, no matter your age, if you are an, an athlete, if you are across the globe, I have felt the way you have felt. And this is what unites us. This is why mental and emotional abuse are so serious and can lead to other types of abuse. Now, I wrote down some of the stories and that I wanted to share with you. So Maggie Nichols, she had the courage to go out and tell her story and file an official uh, sexual abuse report. Simone Biles, she explained how Yes, as a black athlete, as an athlete of color, you're used to getting racial comments. You develop a tough skin. Her mo one of her first comments that she encountered was from a fellow athlete that said, we should all paint our skin black. And that way, maybe we win more medals. But when it comes from within the training, within the, the environment that is supposed to help you thrive, and we, we had won gold. We've done everything that they asked us for, even when we didn't want to. And they couldn't do one damn job. You had one job. You literally had one job and you couldn't protect us. These girls, these children are robots. They're taught that their wor worth is measured by how many medals they bring back. And then after this movie, this ripple effect happened that spread like wildfire, lack of a better word, and again, lack of a better word, brought this abuse pandemic and people were starting, girls were starting to share their stories. Uh, in the UK, the first current gymnast that risked, risked by stating their stories, because in this tweet, you can see how courageous you must be as a gymnast right now to share your story 
because Maggie Nichols was banned from, was not chosen to go to the Olympics. And right now these girls are putting that dream also in jeopardy. Even though it worked well for Maggie Nichols because she learned how to fall in love with the sport again. So the Becky and Ellie Downing, um, which I will include their tweet about their story below, also shared the mental and emotional abuse, their fear they had. Becky said she had to work on a broken ankle and when she complained, she was categorized as mentally weak. Ellie was weight shamed. She had to give, she her nutritionist asked her to take pictures of everything she ate and then take pictures of her in her underwear to prove that she wasn't lying, that she wasn't eating more. Natalie Mutia, also a gymnast, um, said she has been starved from age nine and that she would go, she would, they would give her brown bread and black tea to survive the entire day of training just so she wouldn't gain weight. Girls have been put on birth pills because they don't want them to develop breasts because breasts are bad in gymnastics. You have to have that childlike figure. Or the other thing that Mason called, they would put AstroTurf, which I didn't know what it was. So basically once her feet touched the bar, it would burn her feet. So she would be constantly in the air. Right now, eight-year-old Welsh uh, gymnast Paige Southern Reason said she was strapped to a horizontal pole until her eyes, until she cried her eyes out. Francesca Fox, also a gymnast in the UK, um, said a previous gymnast in the UK said she was called a hippo and that she that because she was so heavy she wouldn't be able to jump as high. Right now, Francesca Fox is afraid to become pregnant because she was weight shamed to such an extent that something as beautiful as carrying a baby terrifies her that her body will change. I'm gonna try and make this as fast as possible. I'm gonna put all these below. Uh, in Australia, girls in Australia started speaking out saying that they were forced to train with broken noses. Uh, Chloe Gilliland, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your names correctly, all the way from Australia said that she was weight shamed to the extent where she thought that her life wasn't worth living instead of giving them what they wanted and ended up with bulimia. Belgium, Angie van Walenheim, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing again your names correctly. She, would, she was also weight shamed. She would go to the sauna, I think it was her. Yeah, she would go to the sauna for an hour and a half to dehydrate, her, dehydrate herself so she weighed less and didn't have to be reprimanded by the coaches. And then lastly, South Korea, Shimzu Ki said, said that she was raped by her coach since age 17. And again, all the way from China, Jessica Shunan Yi. She was, said that athletes were called stupid, lazy, retarded. And she was a skater, she is a skater, and was regularly hit with a, with a plastic skating guard until her shins bled. Now these are just a few stories of the ripple effect that this documentary is having. And they were gaslighted. I will link my video below about gaslighting if you wanna learn more. But they were gaslighted to think that this is what it takes to be an Olympian champion. This is what it takes to be a gymnast. Of course, you're gonna have to bleed and bruise and be slapped and dragged to the bathroom and strapped to a horizontal pole until your eyes cry out. Yes, you're gonna be dragged to a military camp, whether it's called Karoli camp or whatever camp, to toughen you up and not allow to talk to your, your parents and be isolated from your friends. And again, this is why I want to emphasize why mental and emotional abuse are so important, are so important to identify, are so hard to identify, and as shown in Athlete A, can single-handedly throw you in the arms of a sexual predator. A child recognizes starvation it recognizes that it is in pain, it is bleeding, it is bruised, that it is being dragged to a closet for hours so they may cry their eyes out. A child can recognize that, but they don't understand what yet is sexual abuse. And it is those scars from that mental and emotional abuse that have created the depression that Simone Biles expressed, the PTSD, that Leon has, the bulimia, anorexia, all these things. Any of these girls weren't sexually abused. 
but they are showing the effects of both sexual, physical, mental, and emotional abuse. It's the emotions that hit them. It's the emotional and mental abuse that hit him, not the sexual abuse. I want you to trust your gut. Studies have shown that the gut acts as a second brain. So if you feel like you're being abused, if you feel like someone around you is being abused, there is an organization that's called you're stronger than you think. I will put the link below, which encourages um, people to speak up and tell their stories, especially celebrities. Why? Because we want to feel that another person has felt the way we felt. We do not want to feel alone. That's what Simone Biles is trying to, sh to show everyone. That's what Maggie Nichols wanted to show the rest of the athletes out there but she had the door slammed in her face. At the end of the day, we all just want to feel like someone has felt at least somewhat what we, we've gone through, what we felt, empathy. So I would like to thank Netflix and everyone that made up Athlete A, all your stories, all your, all your testimonies. I'm sure it was not easy for you guys to have to rehash these memories, these emotions. Thank you, Simone Biles for speaking up. Thank you, Maggie Nicole, for having the strength and the perseverance to do the first step, even though it costs you so much. But what I've understand, you're much better off. Thank you, Paige Southern Reason, Nalari Mutia, Amy Tinkler, Francesca Fogg, Aggie Van Wallingham, Van Wallingham, uh, Sim Shuki, and Jessica Shuranyu. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you so much for showing strength because I know it takes a lot of strength to do this. So yeah, this video is for all abuse survivors out there that have fought through your demons and keep going. And knowing that you are not alone and just look up the stories below that I will link to see that you and many others from different backgrounds, doing different sports, different professions, different ages have gone through similar stuff have felt similar stuff that you're feeling right now make sure to check out my other videos on emotional abuse and manipulation uh, if you like the way i view things if you like my perspective make sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to get notified when i make new videos every thursday that's it folks <laughs>